So ChatGPT got a major upgrade recently. And in this video, I'll be giving you all of the tips and tricks all the way from beginner to advanced. So you can take complete advantage of this additional mode. So what you firstly want to do is to activate ChatGPT Canvas. Firstly, go to the top left hand side, then click the drop down menu. And you can see that you need to switch to GPT 4.0 with Canvas in beta. This will pop up this menu. You'll know that it is right when you see GPT 4.0 with Canvas. So all this mode is, is this is a mode that allows you to collaborate and make content more effectively. And there are two main modes that you can use for this if you want to take advantage of what this AI tool is capable of doing. So there are two main methods. So one of the first main methods is going to be helping you to write anything better. Now this could be writing books, this could be writing an email, but it's usually for long form writing that allows you to adjust and get to a final output a lot better. So I would say use ChatGPT 4.0 Canvas if you have something that needs to be iterated on multiple times. For this demo, I'm going to write a short snippet for a video script and then I'm going to iterate on that and show you guys how effective this tool can be. So what I'm going to say is write me three paragraph document about how super intelligence and recursive self-improvement is humanity's biggest risk. So now with ChatGPT Canvas, you can see that it immediately comes up with this. And this is quite different to the standard method. Firstly, what you can see here is that if you want to add something, you can always add something right here. At the end of your writing, you can see that what you're able to do is you're able to add any text. So I could say also the advent of the new scaling laws make it super dangerous, okay? I can add any text to any final piece. And if I want to export this text, what I can do is I can click this copy button here. So I just need to do that and I can paste it into Word. I can paste it into absolutely everything. Now, let's say we're not happy with this text. All you need to do is go to the bottom right hand side. And then of course, you can suggest edits. Now, the crazy thing about this is that you don't need to suggest your own edits. If you don't feel like you want to analyze this yourself, you can click this button and you can click press enter. And then you'll see now the AI starts to analyze certain areas. And then of course, what it does is it basically has some recursive self-improvement where it analyzes initially what's gone wrong or what could be improved. Now, you don't always need to make these changes, but these changes are very useful because they allow you to get to your final draft much quicker. You can see one of the first things that it says here, and I just need to hover over it. It says, consider briefly defining recursive self-improvement earlier to help readers unfamiliar with this concept understand why it poses a significant risk. This is something that is really easy to do, and it does make sense. Most people don't understand what this means outside of AI, so I'm going to click apply, and now you can see if this goes blue, it makes those changes rather quickly. You can also see it says this sentence could also benefit from an analogy. So once again, I can click apply here. This is going to once again, continue to make improvements. But like I said before, it's completely up to you with as to what things you want to change and what other things you don't. Now, another thing that I find really, really useful is this right here, is the reading level. Oftentimes you might face a complex topic or you might have a certain email that you might need to change in terms of how the writing is. So for example, what you can do is you can check the reading level. So you can scroll up to put it to graduate school all the way down to middle school or kindergarten. For example, let's say I wanted to explain this topic to people that were quite younger than me. I could say, let's put this down to middle school and then it's going to redo the entire text and of course, it's going to give me that text in a much easier to understand way. This is really useful if you're trying to send different pieces of text to different audiences. Now, another thing that you can do that I really like about this is that you can also adjust the length. Let's say, for example, I didn't want this text to be as long as it is. All I could do is once again, drag the slider to the top. I could make it to the longest or I could make it all the way down to the shortest. If I want to make it to a little bit longer, I could just scroll up and then click enter. And you can now see it's going to make this a little bit longer. So you can see that it manages to make this a lot longer, which is really nice considering I might want to use this for a future video. Now, 
This is something that is really great. You can see that we can also change a final polish. So for example, I could click enter here and it's going to go over the text and it's going to add a final polish such as different categories. Basically, all of the text that you've input here, it's now going to organize this in a way that basically finishes your text. Now, before you do add a final polish, there is also one thing that I think you could do. Let's say, for example, your chat GPT manages to give you a piece of text that you don't really understand. What you could do is you could, for example, highlight that area and then, of course, ask it to explain or edit this. For example, let's say we decided that we didn't understand something. So let's say we decide to hover this part, just highlight this. We could then, of course, change this, put it into bold. For example, we could then, of course, unbold that. We could, of course, put certain things in italic. Or, for example, we could make different headings here. Now, I wouldn't do that if I was you because sometimes this does get a little bit confusing, but it's completely up to you on how you want to do that. If you want to make quick edits, what you can do is, for example, you can say highlight this and then you can ask ChatGPT to edit or explain this. So, for example, I can say make this section longer and then I'm going to click enter and now it's going to highlight that and then it's going to make that specific section even longer. Now, that's really useful because it allows me to understand certain areas or if I want to go on a deep dive on specific areas in my script, this is going to be the best way to do that. Also, what I can do, let's say, for example, I just had this and this was too much. I could say, OK, this is too much text here. A secret tip slash trick that you could do is I could say, you know what, make this part bullet points instead. And then I could just click enter. And now you're going to see that it's going to highlight all of this text right here and it's going to make this all bullet points. This is so that you are going to get text that can be easier to read. And this is going to be a lot easier in terms of digestibility. It does depend on whether or not you're doing a script or whether or not you're doing something that is going to be read. But overall, having these small changes is easy to implement considering Canvas is remarkably effective at performing such quick changes. Now, another thing that you can do is you could also change the structure of this text. So let's say, for example, right here, you could just simply put your cursor here. And then, of course, what you can do is you can simply just press the enter button just like that. And you can break this text down to have it be more readable. This is a really easy thing that I like to do because sometimes it allows me to read the text and get a lot more from it. Now, once again, if you want to change future bits, you can click on the right hand side. You'll hover over certain pieces of text and you'll be able to easily understand and read exactly what's going on. Now, lastly, but not leastly, I don't think this feature when it comes to writing, which is, of course, the first part of the video. I don't think this feature is that useful. But what you can do, which is rather strange, is you can add emojis. So I think this is, of course, a little bit unprofessional, but there might be instances where this is warranted. So you could, for example, just say add emojis and it's going to go through the entire text and it's going to add emojis. I think this is something that is rather fun, but it's more of something that is for when you're reading text. And I think it's just something that makes it a lot more engaging to read for very small pieces of text online. Now, that was the first section of the video. Canvas can also be used to write code, which is the second most important way that you can use this software. Let's take a look at how I can use Canvas to develop some simple coding scripts and then, of course, see how we can use those. So now I'm going to open up a new chat. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, can you code me a trading bot in PineScript gives buy and sell signals based on the RSI? So it doesn't really matter what prompt you give it. When you give it code, once again, if I click enter, you're going to see it's going to pop up with this code. Right here, I instantly get 30 lines of code. And honestly, this is far superior than trading traditionally with the current chat mode. What I meant to say was talking to the current chat mode. Now, you might be thinking, why on earth do I need to use Canvas anyways? That is because with ChatGPT Canvas, this allows you to make iterations to your code without having to regenerate the entire thing. If you decide to code with the original ChatGPT user interface, the problem is, is that it manages to regenerate the entire script from front to back every single time you might want to make a small change. The problem is, is that with this, you can literally decide to change this to make it for Ethereum. 
So for example, what I could do is I could go to here. And of course, if I want to add comments, I can add any kind of codes. If I want to add, you know, anything like I could add anything if that yada 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 i could add anything as well which is really nice into the traditional chat gpt this is something that you're not able to do now what i can do here is for example i'm just going to hover over this and then i'm going to say make it for ethereum on the 45 minute chart instead and then i'm going to go ahead and click enter and then you're about to see that it is going to change certain areas of this code there we go really really simple really really easy of course, what I could do is I could just once again make certain changes, but the best thing about this is that it won't have to change this for different versions. Now, amazingly, what you can also do is you can also click code review. So you can click that and then we're going to click enter and you can see that it gives me once again a lot of different areas for improvement. So for those of you that are novice coders that may not understand certain areas of your code, it's going to give you certain iterations that you can change to your code as long as you check them over beforehand. It says consider making the RSI period configurable by using yada yada parameter. The second buy signal could be changed here. This could be improved here. You may want to add this here. And of course, these things are easy for you to add and to change. I'm not going to absolutely change anything here, but this does work. So I'm going to come over to this area to make sure the code works. I'm going to click update on chart. And then, so now that I can see that this code doesn't work, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this error, just click copy and paste. And basically what you want to do is quickly, you want to make sure that, you know, you also click, you fix any bugs because oftentimes when ChatGPT generates the first line of code, it doesn't usually do it correctly first. So make sure you click fix bugs. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight over the area here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter the right thing. So I'm going to put ask ChatGPT. I'm going to do that right there. And you can see I just copied that from my code editor and I'm going to click input. So now what it's going to do is it's going to quickly change that, make sure everything's working. And then, of course, this is the code that I can now use. Then once again, once I'm back in this code editor, I'm going to paste this in. I'm going to click update on chart and hopefully this does work. And you can see that it manages to give me the net profit and how much these trades actually worked. This is remarkably effective. And once again, like I said before, this is how you quickly diagnose issues. Now with your code editor, what you can do is you can port this different code to a language. So for example, what you can do is you can click this right here and it gives you six different options for six different languages. This is remarkably useful if you're coding in different areas and you need to switch between languages for certain you know, things. I'm not sure entirely what you're going to be doing, but this is something that I find to be remarkably effective when using this with multiple different programs. It's completely up to you on how you want to port this into other languages, but it will be up to you if you want to use that. Now, if you manage to mess up your code or you manage to change something, you can use these buttons on the top right hand side to go to the first version or the previous version. You can see that the small changes are going to be there, but it's up to you whether or not you want to do this. You can see next version, previous version, you can go all the way back to the first one and you can see that it's going to give you exactly that one. So hopefully this helped you out understanding exactly how to use ChatGPT Canvas. The two main methods are coding and of course, writing. I do believe that this does have a different rate limit than the standard chat GPT 4.0, but I would use this definitely if you are coding or working with certain things. If this video did help you, do not forget to leave a like and subscribe and let me know if there are any tips or tricks that you want to leave down in the description. With that being said, it's been the AI Grid and I'll see you in the next amazing video.